behind Marvelous Mike because he's being sued. I, I mean, that, that is the flimsiest reason they could possibly give. If you said that Marvelous Mike was engaged in bringing refugees to, or, or people in conflict to Antigua and Barbuda and that, uh, and that uh, uh, therefore, he's, he's not um, attracting the tourists that he told us he would attract then, that would be a good reason. But that is not Marvelous Mike's doing. That's something called fly, um, uh, fly High, which I think it, comes out it, of Portugal. It, 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 Mr. Harris, I, I think what's been happening, I've been listening to all the responses you've been giving everyone so far as journalists, and I really think that you're insulting our intelligence, respectfully, sir. You know, as journalists, we do our research. We come here to represent the nation of Antigua and Barbuda, and we investigate. And as an investigative journalist, I have investigated the marvelous Mike, Emmanuel Sampson, and the Antigua area situation, where I have in my possession the full lawsuit, other information, where it shows that this marvelous Mike is actually intimidating the claimants via letters. And you're sitting there, sir, and, and, and giving us such answers and, and still saying that this individual is interested in going forward with a business that has put the country in a situation where we have individuals who've lost their lives. Okay, so uh, you once asked me a question uh, on this same show. And I asked you, I asked you, I asked you, wait a minute, am I to answer now or are you going to continue with your question? It's not a, it's not a show, sir. Just correcting me, sorry. What did you say? I said it's not a show, sir. It's a press briefing. It's government business. What is she talking about? Do you know? At, at any rate, you once asked me a question while I was on this program. Mm -hmm. And I asked you for your personal opinion. You told me that uh, uh, journalists don't give personal opinions. But you're giving a personal opinion this morning about Marvelous Mike on the basis of uh, the pleadings put forward by a plaintiff in a disagreement with Marvelous Mike. That's your opinion that you're offering. And I don't know that I'm insulting anybody's intelligence by pointing to the flaws in your thinking. Certainly, the flaws in your thinking are very evident. And uh, I can clearly show that, uh, that um, when, t when a person is sued, it isn't because the person has some character flaw or, has been, or something wrong has, has happened. It, it is um, on account of a disagreement which they have. And you must build a case if you expect to be successful. And the plaintiff is trying to build a case. You're having those documents in your possession is not an indication uh, that um, Marvelous Mike is a rotten guy. I just don't understand how you could come to that conclusion. That's okay, the flaw so in your thinking. All right, so let, let, let's back up a little bit. Marvelous Mike is the investor. This, the government of Antigua said that they're going to offer 20%. They're offering the building. Uh, these individuals are to bring wealthy, wealthy tourists to the, the shores of Antigua and Barbuda. We saw a signing of Prime Minister Gaston Brown and the investors on national television. It was something to celebrate. There was a flight that came. The first inaugural flight appeared in the first of no, on the 1st of November with a water cannon. This investor has promised Antigua and Barbuda that we will bring you wealthy investors to take the nation forward, business-wise, investment, etc. We're at a situation now where we're having to discuss a, a legal perspective that was adjusted in our uh, laws to have our West African brothers work with a work permit without paying, well, with paying zero dollars. We're at this point, but we started with Marvelous Mike. We started with this investor making this connection from Nigeria to Antigua. Whether his business plan was copied, whether Highfly got such detailed information, this should ask or raise questions for the government as, as it is doing for the people. And it's not a UPP thing, it's not a political thing. It is the nation that is concerned on what is going on. And Antigua is being interviewed and reviewed. All eyes are on us, sir. So it's our responsibility, and as the chief of staff for the government, can we get some answers on, on what's going on? Uh, first, uh, you're making a speech, a very long speech, and then uh, the you. question which you ask has, has no bearing on the long speech which you just made. Uh, okay. We have given all the answers to all, every question that has been posed by every reporter here. If you are not in agreement with the, uh, with the answer, you can indicate that and say where you disagree. But I'm telling you, ma'am, that merely having the pleadings 
of the plaintiff in your hand is not evidence of any investigative capability. It's merely having the pleadings in your hand and uh, they may have been provided by the plaintiff himself. And no, those don't. pleadings are being made by someone who wants uh, to have a marvelous mic pay him some money. That is what it's all about. It, that, that does not make you a, um, a bad person just because somebody sues you. I, I mean, that is the argument that you're making this morning. And I say that your <laughs> argument is flawed. And, right. you, and please don't tell me, to... please don't tell me how to do my job as chief of staff. I've done it now for nine years almost. And the person to whom I, I make reports is very pleased with it. You may not be, and I expect you not to be. But uh, I know that uh, the, the people who send me here to do this job are pleased with my performance. All right, sir. Let's, let's move on a little bit. Now, earlier you were saying, uh, when you were making your response to Gemma, um, you said that the UPP are happy and they're gathering and they're having a black march and, and they're making this into a political football. We have three individuals who are dead. And Gemma asked you the question with regards to identifying those bodies, what are their ages, their names, identities, and you said, I can't answer that. If the government is so concerned and so connected to this situation, other than, other than saying so, why after 17 days, because this incident happened on the 28th of March, it's not 10 days, it's 17 days, why is the government not able to give identity of these three individuals to provide a full and proper in-depth report of the Antiguans who were involved with the smuggling and also the status of these 13 uh, Cameroonians or 14 who are being held at, at the community center in St. Kitts. Okay. Are you finished with your question? Because I don't want you to interrupt me. All right. First and foremost, these people died in the seas of St. Kitts and Nevis. St. Kitts and Nevis took them to their shores and they are in St. Kitts and Nevis. They also took the uh, the bodies of the three deceased um, passengers to St. Kitts and Nevis. They're still in St. Kitts and Nevis. We have indicated a willingness on the part of Antigua and Barbuda to have both bodies as well as living persons return to Antigua. The government of St. Kitts and Nevis is doing what the government of Antigua and Barbuda would have done if uh, the, these passengers had suffered um, a loss of life in their waters. We would conduct our own investigation. We would, we would determine if any laws in Antigua and Barbuda had been broken, and we would pursue those who are responsible on the basis uh, that they had broken laws in Antigua and Barbuda. Your measurement of whether or not Antigua and Barbuda cares by my not uh, uh, telling you what the names of those people are and uh, when they're going to come to Antigua if at all, and so on. I, I think it's just rubbish. Yeah, yeah, you know, you're, you're doing your very best to insult me this morning, but I'm taking it with a, with a, uh, as it is intended, as some sort of uh, game that you are playing. But you can't that's win this not, game. That's not in my, you that's must not be, you must be play, I see, I asked you if you were finished, you know, and you told me yes. You're interrupting me. So it must Sorry. be some sort of game you're playing. And let me tell you something, you can't win this game. Uh, because we're better at it than you are. You, you, uh, you are asking questions and uh, implying uh, by way of your questions that somehow Antigua and Barbuda does not care. That was the argument last night uh, of those who carried flowers in their arms and so on. And I say, I say that uh, that is a charade because they were uh, very unhelpful to those West Africans who came here. Very, very unhelpful, the UPP was very unhelpful uh, on their radio stations and elsewhere. They said all kinds of ugly things. Very, very unhelpful. And the government of Antigua and Barbuda had open arms. In fact, we not only have open arms, we have demonstrated a willingness to absorb them into the Antigua and Barbuda economy by allowing them to work and earn an income in Antigua and Barbuda. That is an act of generosity. It's the same act we, um, we provide to our CARICOM brethren who are here. And uh, we have good reason to love our CARICOM brethren. We have the same history. Along comes um, some West Africans uh, who are fleeing uh, um, difficulty in their countries. Uh, and they have arrived here on, an air, on airplanes uh, that um, were 
um, originated, or that originated somewhere in Portugal. And we say uh, that they are here now and we must treat with them. But <laughs> treating with them does not mean uh, that uh, uh, because you say that we ought to have a public inquiry that we should. We know the best way to proceed and we are proceeding in the best way possible. Thank you. In response to you, sir, uh, my intention is never to insult you and I'm not playing a game. I know that we're speaking about the lives of individuals and when I apply myself, I apply myself diligently to get a job done. When I'm asking for the identity of these individuals, I'm being asked by Cameroonian brothers and sisters and those in the diaspora who are connected and they're trying to get information on their families. So that's why we're asking those questions. So when we ask the government and they're able to find those information or that information, they are able to proceed in whatever situation. And when I say it's been 17 days, it is a concern for the people. This is, this is not a game, it's not a competition. I'm, I'm not trying to toot my own horn and I'm certainly not trying to embarrass you or insult you. And if that's what you feel I do or see, I do apologize for that. Let me just ask a few more questions quickly.